How do you help unbelievers who are demonized? Now, somebody says, the Bible, there are verses in the Bible that says, demon possess. Nothing wrong. That's how the translator translated demonize. They translated it as demon possess. That's fine. Same idea. Possess, control, but I don't like the literal, because the idea of possession, if you think, we think of it physically like you enter a room and uh, you possess it. We know what the translators are saying. But explain to me spirit being. How can spirit being enter and live? Enter and live. So you want to call it possession? Fine. But technically, the word is demonization. Technically, that is the literal rendering. But if the translator uses the word demon possess, that's fine. The point is controlled by the devil. That's the idea, controlled, demonized. Do you understand? The key word is control. The reason why I like that word better, because many of us are partly controlled. I don't like to use the word, you are partly possessed. You will get scared. You get angry. But I like to scare you if I can. But technically, it is influence control. People don't realize this. Their influence. For example, I have former friends that I like to meet. I like to talk because of certain disagreements. I'm surprised. They don't want to meet. Now, if you are mature, you will not begin to smell. The devil is a divider. So he does not want Christians to reconcile. But the people don't realize this. By not willing to meet, by not willing to discuss, they are falling into a trap concocted by the devil. You see, the devil will put thoughts in your mind. It is useless to meet. They mean malice. They mean bad. But the Bible says, do not judge people. Do not judge people's motive. You see, that's what the Bible says. So the devil is very wily. He will make things to promote division. So that's being controlled. Example, rebellion against authority. Many people don't realize the person rebelling is partly being demonized. But if I use the word, you are being possessed. Nako, magulo yan. So what is the better word use? Demonized. You are being influenced. You are being controlled. The only question is, to what degree of influence? For some people, even their physical body, they lose control. That's influence. Severe influence. Their mind, severely influenced. They, they can no longer think on their own. So how do you help unbelievers? Everybody, this is principle. Say to Satan and the demons, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan and all demons who are controlling this person, be bound. I command you to come out of this person. Do not return to them or send similar or replacement spirits. Now, the reason why we added this is because we have experience. When the devil lives, in the Bible, it talks about they can send other spirits in. And, and Jesus said, this guy is now in a worse state. So what you need to do is this. That is not the magic formula. What is important is this. In your mind, you command the evil spirit. And you say, I command you, evil spirit, to live this person, never to come back, and don't send similar spirits. So three things. You command the evil spirit. Number one, live. Number two, don't come back. Number three, do not send similar spirits. Okay? Are we clear? Yes. This is crucial. People ask, can a Christian be demonized. 
Remember? They ask you. Let me tell you. You have some sincere believers who don't have experience. They say no. Because a Christian is owned by Jesus. So how can he be possessed? That's the problem with using the word possession. Because you say you are owned by Jesus. How can now Satan possess you? So that's why I don't like the word possess. Can a Christian be demonized? Be influenced? Be controlled? Definitely. I've seen Christians demonize. They lose physical control. You will hear stories. Okay? So this is not controversial. If you study church history, you will notice after people come to Christ, one of the first few things they do is they cleanse themselves. They go through uh, what we go through in our weekend encounter. How many of you have gone through weekend encounter? Truth encounter. Excuse me. True life encounter. How many of you have gone through true life encounter? Raise your hands. Okay, those of you who have not gone through it, you need to go through. Because in the true life encounter, they go through this exercise, what we will go through, okay, to help you. So you need to go through true life encounter. All right, example in the Bible. The Bible tells us there was a girl demonized. She continued doing this for many days, but Paul was greatly annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, I command you, everybody read, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. It came out at that very moment. So that's where we get this example of I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. When you use the word in the name, by the authority of Jesus Christ, I command you to live. Now, this is a very interesting story because this girl was a fortune teller. She has power. And they were making a lot of money. So when Paul got annoyed, he confronted the evil spirit. And the Bible tells us the evil spirit left. When the spirit left this girl, of course, he lost her power. So the people got mad. So they beat Paul up. Just because you do the will of God does not mean you will not have a problem. If the demons resist, repeat the command and stand firm in the truth of God's word that they must obey the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not you. Recite Bible verses as you tell them they must obey the Lord Jesus Christ. So your authority is in Jesus. Okay? So when you encounter, don't shout, just be firm. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to leave her. Now, the demonized person can act okay, or fall asleep, all kinds of actions. So you have to wake them up. David is very smart. He knows. But don't be afraid. If the demons still resist, as the demon, demonized person, if they're coherent, whether they are, whether they or their ancestors were involved in the occult or spiritism or were witch doctors. If they were, tell the person to repeat after you. So you tell now the demon, this is to me the most powerful. You tell the demonized person, say this, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I renounce all the occult practices of my ancestors and myself. I cancel all control of Satan and the demons in my life because of this. Now, you don't have to memorize this. What the point is this? You tell the demonized person if they have been involved, you know, in, in Tagalog, in the Philippines, usually what do our ancestors get involved in? Anting, anting? Albulario? Kulam? Okay. You use bawang, you know, to counterattack. Spiritista, remember, they go to Spiritista. And some people, you go to fortune telling. For some uh, Chinese family, you go to the temple. You were offered. I mean, there are all kinds of practices. And this, this has to be brought out. Okay? So, you will learn what to do. Let's go. 
Then command the evil spirits to live in Jesus' name. If they don't, continue to command them to live in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why they have no choice? Remember I told you, in my case, it took hours. Because we did not deal with the root problem. And the root problem was bitterness, anger. See, I never knew. Because she was such a cute little girl. She was good in piano, very smart. I cannot imagine how a young girl would have bitterness and anger against their parents. So that kind of escaped our notice. But when I discovered it, we dealt with it. And right there, we asked her to pray. So don't try to memorize the magic words. You just say, were you involved? And they, they do. Okay, just say, Lord Jesus, I confess that my ancestors did what they did was wrong. I confess I participated in it. I now renounce this. Something like that. You understand? Just admit the mistake, admit the sin, confess it, and say, Lord, I renounce this. Something like that, okay? Because I'm afraid if you want to memorize this, what happens if you forget the wording? <laughs> you see, the devil does not leave us because of your magical formula. The devil leaves you because of Jesus. Amen? Amen. When the evil spirits leave and the person is normal, ask the person if they have trusted in Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. If they have not, share the gospel with them. Then bring them to Jesus. Then help them go through the steps to overcoming strongholds and how to live in victory, which we, are, we will give you. Because after the demons, after they leave the person, the aftercare is very crucial. That's why we believe in small group. In fact, you should send them to our uh, recovery program. There's nothing wrong. Okay? But this is crucial. When they become coherent, you ask them. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. What is this? First John 4, 4. When you trusted in Christ Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, let's read. He set you free from the power of sin and death through his death and resurrection. At the cross, Jesus defeated Satan. But if we live with unconfessed sin in our, in our life and believe the lies of Satan, instead of believing the truth in God's word, Satan and demons have access or the right of way to us and can build strongholds in our minds and our flesh through which they influence and control us. The biblical term for this is demonization and not demon possession, as commonly described. Let me repeat, nothing wrong with demon possession, if you want to use that word, except my concern is it limits application. Because today, some of you are being controlled. You are influenced by the devil. Can you imagine if I say you are being possessed? You will get angry at me. And then the possession is even more real now. <laughs> so use proper terminology. But don't scold people if they use the word possession. You know what they are saying. Because the guy loses control. That's the extreme case. You lose control. Just imagine. How can you explain why some men will forsake their wife and their family? Why would they do that? They are not thinking. And why are they not thinking? Because they are being demonized. But you can say you are demon possessed. Because that term can cause people to misunderstand. The secret is the devil is influencing us. The only question is to what degree? Some so controlled that they lose even their own physical uh, ability. We have power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to repent of these sins, to break these satanic strongholds, and to live in victory by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. No one can do this for us. So I'm now telling you, don't depend on people who will always cast out or set you free. Don't depend. You learn to depend on Jesus. We need to assume responsibility for our 
for overcoming the strongholds in our lives and walking in victory. It is good to have a person with you to pray for you and encourage you as you, through, as you go through the process. Okay? So, overcoming strongholds guide. So, how do you begin? Well, when you conduct a small retreat, I'm not teaching all small group leaders. The first thing you do is to pray. So how do you pray? This is how you pray. Let's pray now together. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your presence in our lives. We stand in the truth that all authority has been given to the resurrected Christ in heaven and on earth. And because we are in Christ and share that authority, we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. And we pray for your complete protection and guidance. Do not allow the evil one to cause disturbances. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Do you pray that prayer now? She make this your prayer. You must know the following. Number one, you must know who you are in Christ. Guys, do you know who you are in Christ? Don't identify yourself just in terms of your profession. I'm a writer. I'm a businessman. But this tells you, you are a child of God. He created, he rescued us. Okay? So, we have been rescued from the dominion of darkness. Number two, know you are protected by the power of God. The Bible gives us an amazing promise in 1 Peter. We are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You are protected. We are in a spiritual battle. We learned this already. You must know that you have victory. Victory is guaranteed. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Next, you must know Jesus Christ's authority. In fact, you should memorize this verse. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Now, give you an give you example of authority in Jesus. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, let's read this now. I give you the power to tread on serpents, scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Hey, guys, are your names written in heaven? Yes. Okay. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's a promise. Strongholds inventory. So how do you go through now? We categorize the different major category. First, the solution to anger and bitterness. Look at the solution. The Bible does not say you wait for one month, you wait for two months. The Bible tells us the solution. What's the solution? After commanding you, do not give the devil an opportunity in your heart. Look at the command. Let, louder, let oh, bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. And then positive. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, as God in Christ has forgiven you. My friend, have a forgiving heart, because people will disappoint you, and you will be disappointed. And the Bible says you don't base on feeling. It's a command. So let me repeat, Christians, if there is anybody that you don't want to meet, you don't want to talk, you are being influenced by the devil. You have no excuse. You've got to be willing to forgive. The Bible says be tender-hearted. Some people, their heart is so hard already. You know why it gets hardened? Because the devil is causing them to become hard-hearted. So it says be kind. To one another. I know some of you have been abused by people. I know people have taken advantage of you. But what's so sad is we have vain imagination. We think the person is doing this to hurt us. Worst of all, these vain imaginations are not even true. And yet you refuse to talk. Crazy. Am I correct? 
So shame on us if we don't talk to each other and we don't love each other. Question to you today. Is there anybody in your life that you don't want to talk to? If there is, you cannot leave this room without settling that. Then everything we are discussing here is a joke. You are becoming a victim yourself. And you are already a victim. How can you help others when you are a victim of demonization, bitterness, anger? So this is serious. The command is, look, be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Let me ask you, how did Jesus forgive us? How did God forgive us? Complete, partial, or what? Complete. Imagine, if God were to say, you are not yet sincere. If God were to say, you know what, let me think about it, to forgive you or not. Patay kang bata. Anyone you forgive, Paul says, I forgive. You know why? I forgiven. If there was anything to forgive, you know why? Look at what Paul said. In order that Satan might not out with us. So for Paul, forgiveness is crucial. And I submit to you, in the body of Christ, there's a lot of bitterness, anger, misunderstanding. And our problem is, we do not know. This is a scheme of the devil. He wants you to be angry. He wants you to have bitterness. Friends, can I repeat? I always say, sooner or later, I will disappoint you. Can you tell your neighbor, sooner or later, you will disappoint me. You better mean it. Sooner or later, we will disappoint each other. Yes or no? Yes. But tell your neighbor, but I still love you. I will love you. Wonderful. Unforgiveness and bitterness are major strongholds. Okay? So you forgive because God commands us to forgive. Even though you may not feel like it. This is the biggest problem of women. They tell me, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't feel like forgiving. Excuse me, a hypocrite is somebody who knows what to do and not do it. Not to follow your feeling is not being a hypocrite. It is being obedient. So don't ever be deceived. A hypocrite away. I don't want to meet with them. So why should I be a hypocrite? Excuse me. That's the wrong concept of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when you know what is right and you don't do it. You call yourself a Christian and you don't act like a Christian. That's hypocrisy. Even though we may not feel it, we are to forgive. This is called motion or action before emotion. Forgiveness is an act of our will in obedience to Christ. It is a choice you do. It's not a feeling. So get that clearly. It is not forgetting the person's sins. It is no longer holding the sin against the person and no longer wanting him to suffer for it. You know, many people think, if I forgive him, then he, he will no longer suffer. Excuse me. If you don't forgive, who is the one suffering? You. Somebody said, you know, I discovered when I forgive, the prisoner was set free to discover I was the prisoner. For all you know, the person you're angry with is sleeping so well at night. He's not even thinking of you. You are the one. Sometimes people think they're the most important person in the world. No, no. You leave them to God's hand to work in their life. You know, the test of whether you love people. I used to have a hard time praying for people I don't like. I said, Lord, I forgive them. I love them. But you know, God told me, have you ever prayed to bless them? Lord, you mean these people I don't like? You want me to pray that you will bless them? God says yes. Change my paradigm. Because Jesus said, bless those who persecute you. Bless those who curse you. Many people are so enamored with deep Bible study. They say, I want Bible study. I want to go deeper and deeper. My friend, I don't want deeper and deeper. The most Simple truth. Love one another. You are not even doing it. You want deeper truth? Excuse me. 
We are funny people. Forgiveness from the heart acknowledges the hurt and the pain. It is agreeing to live with the consequences of the person's sin. I have people, you don't know what he did to me. He destroyed our family. He destroyed my reputation. So, but God commands me, forgive. You see, if you don't trust God to overcome all the bad things that people have done against you, if you don't believe that God can overcome the wickedness of men, you will really have a hard time following Jesus. I follow Jesus because I believe it is the best path. You take advantage of me, Lord, you promise you will take care of me. And then you tell me, vengeance is mine, God will repay. So I leave them to God. You, you are not God. Can you please tell your neighbor, you are not God. <laughs> and tell your neighbor, you will never be God. Okay? You will never be God. Okay? So what's our job? Forgive and love. Okay, now God's assurance. Look at the assurance. God causes all things to work together for good. To those who love God. What are all of these things for good? I've been cheated. I've been maligned. People have done bad things. But can I tell you something? As I look back, God turned them for good. I don't know how to explain this. God is God. Don't limit him. To be set free from the stronghold of unforgiveness, anger, bitterness, hatred. Ask the Lord. Right now, I want you to do this. Ask the Lord to reveal to you any person whom you have not forgiven. List down their names and their offenses against you. Then in obedience to the Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you say, I forgive them, Lord, one by one. So if you don't mind, I want you to do it right now. Now, how do you do it? So that it will be faster. I know you, you probably have to do this again, but just the top few names. Are there people like that now in your mind? Yes or no? I know, yes, I know. You know why? That's our problem. So what must you do? If you don't want to write their name so that your neighbor won't see it, okay? <laughs> Just um, between you and the Lord. But I'm serious. I'm dead serious. Before we proceed, this part. I want you to write their name and then pray this prayer. Look, look at this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, because you have forgiven me all my sins through the blood of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I now forgive, okay, whatever is their name. You say it to him. Okay, their name, what they did, and the emotional pain, what they caused. Then, continue reading, that it has caused me, as you have forgiven me, I now trust in you to use this experience for good in my life and in the lives of others. I claim in Jesus' name and based on his shed blood that any evil influence that we were in my life, that were in my life, are now rendered powerless and cleansed from my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So please, take some time. Pray this prayer. And you know what's amazing? Many times it's your own family members. Many times it's your close friends that has hurt you. So please, choose to forgive them today. So pray something like this, okay? Lord, as you have forgiven me, I now choose to forgive. So just tell him. And if you have no longer any problem here, why don't you pray for people that you know? who are full of bitterness or anger. You know they're angry at somebody. Pray for them that they'll be set free. The second group of sin is called sexual immorality. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, homosexuals, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. Such were some of you. You were washed. 
You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the good news. The Corinthians were very immoral people. The Bible says, you have been set free. So the Bible commands us, flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. This is a special category of sin that I encourage young people, parents, you teach your children to keep themselves pure. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is inside, who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Glorify God in your body. So this is a special category of sin. And I've discovered many of us here have had sexual illicit relationship. Therefore, these are examples. Lustful thoughts, pornography, adultery, homosexuality, abortion, fetish, abnormal sexual desire linked to an object, fornication, molesting a child, raping, incest others. I'm going to ask my wife to give an example of a lady that was involved in this and she finally confessed. List down every person, including prostitutes, with whom you have had immoral sexual relationship. When you have an immoral sexual relation with another person, there is a literal bonding which needs to be renounced and broken up. Many of you have done it in the past already, but there are some people who are new. So that's why that list you may not want your wife to see. You see what I'm saying? Or your husband to see. There was a lady whom I met years, years ago who was a very angry person. And uh, through our time together, she came to know the Lord. But it was a journey because she was an alcoholic. She had tried to kill her brother. And the first time I met her, I had the discernment from the Holy Spirit that there must, that I felt there was a sexual problem in her life. And I said, I please, I hope you will not be offended. But could I ask you, have you who had any lesbian experiences? And she was irate. She said, of course not. What do you think of me? Not at all. And you know, this is what I, this is how I operate. I believe what a person tells me and I just surrender that to God because only God knows. And if I don't believe the person, then I'm judging them. So I said, Lord, you know if it's true or not, but I will believe what she's saying. And some years later, we went through this together, overcoming strongholds. And as we were going through it, she said, I want to tell you something, Deanna. I lied to you. I really was in lesbian relationships. She said, what happened to me is I was molested by a nurse, a female nurse, when I was a child. And she said that after that, I got into lesbian relationships. But that day, by the power of the Holy Spirit, she renounced it. And after we finished, she was such a happy person. She went home. I just have to tell you something. Sexual sins, in our experience, opens a portal to demonic influence, strong demonic influence. And um, she went home, and she called me in a panic. And she said, Deanna, you have to come to my house right now. I said, why? Why do you have to go to your house? She said, when I got home, there's this tall shadow of a man in my house. And he's following me. And it's a demon. And you have to come and exercise the demon in Jesus' name. And I said, sister, I don't have to come to your house. You have power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You stand firm in that authority. And you exercise that demon. And by God's grace, that demon fled. So I'm just sharing that what we're sharing with you today is that when you go over these, and there's no, you know, you stand against these strongholds in your life, and you will see the power of God. And just to let you know, she was really delivered. Some time later, she said to me, you know, Diana, how much God has transformed me, that even the thought of a homosexual relationship is repulsive to me. So I want to encourage you. You should go through this. This is real. It's not just a prayer. You're not saying words. These are things that you are now standing firm in your faith, in the authority of Jesus Christ, to tell the demons that have been tormenting you uh, into sexual sins to leave you in Christ's name. Praise God. There will be more stories from my wife, okay? It's called installment basis. <laughs> now, you need to pray this prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father... Please forgive me for having a sexual relationship with. Now, if you do not know the names already, God knows. Do you think God knows? So don't worry, okay? But 
God sees your heart. Name each person's name. I know one of our pastors who is here, but um, he already publicized his story. He had a relationship. The last time I recall was 87 women. Yeah. Why? Are you more? 100? <laughs> all I'm telling you is we are all messed up. But God can fix the problem. It's all about Jesus. Amen? I repent and claim your forgiveness and your cleansing from these sins. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I renounce these sinful sexual relationships and I break any bonding between me and those persons and cancel any stronghold of Satan in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command all evil spirits that are in me or around me as a result of my sinful sexual relationships to leave me forever. Do not send similar spirits or replacement or reinforcement spirits to me. In Jesus' name, and based on his shed blood, I claim his victory over these sins. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So do you understand this is a sample guided prayer? So maybe we should pray this together, okay? So those of you, you now think of the names that you have sexual relationship with. Are you now thinking? Now, I will lead you in this prayer. Before I lead you in prayer, you have a mental prayer to Jesus. Are you now praying to Jesus to renounce this? You know, once you renounce this, praise God. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, please forgive me for having a sexual relationship with, I repent and claim your forgiveness. And your cleansing from these sins. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I renounce these sinful sexual relationships and I break any bonding between me and those persons and cancel any stronghold of Satan in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command all evil spirits that are in me, around me, as a result of my sinful sexual relationships to leave me forever. Do not send similar spirits or replacement or reinforcement spirits. In Jesus' name, based on his shed blood, I now claim victory over these sins. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. If you are sexually abused or raped, you are a victim. God grieves with you. He promises to heal you. Then you pray this kind of prayer. Again, there's no magic in this prayer. This is just a guide. So some of you, if you have been abused or what, then you can pray something like this. Lord, I was sexually abused, raped by whatever. I renounce having my body used in this way. It's not your fault. You're a victim. I claim cleansing and healing of my mind, body, and soul and spirit by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I cancel any ground that Satan has gained in my life by this, and I command any evil spirits that were transferred to me to leave me forever. Do not send similar spirits, replacement or reinforcement spirits. I trust you to use this experience for good, as you promise. I now dedicate my body to you to be used for his glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Is that good? Yes. Praise God. Although you were a victim, if you feel guilty or that you should have done something to stop the abuse, then feel free to pray this prayer. Now, these are just guidelines. Lord Jesus, I know I was a victim, but I feel I should have done something about it to stop the abuse, rape, or I did something to cause it, I now want to be released from this nagging guilt. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask for your forgiveness and claim your healing. Please, cancel all strongholds that Satan and the demons have built in my life. I'm now a creation, washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I dedicate my body to you. This is just a verse to let you know 
even young kid, even in the womb, there's life. However, some of you did this in ignorance or will, willfully. Doesn't matter. It's past. So pray this prayer together. Please read. Go. You know, many times, we Christians, we condemn people who went through abortion. But remember what I told you? Before coming to Christ, you are blind. You did a lot of crazy things. Your job, my job, is to love people, to be redemptive, to offer them a new life, which is only possible in Christ. So that, ladies, you will not feel you are alone. And gentlemen, we have many members we have done stupid things. But by the grace of God, God has transformed them. The third category, sins of the flesh. Please read. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkards, carousing, and things like this, of which I forewarn you, as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You notice how God categorized even causing divisions, disputes, dissensions. See, these are all the work of the devil. So what must you do? This is a list, which I don't think uh, I need to explain one by one. But just examine yourself, okay? In your mind mentally, are you prone to, what, from temper, violent tendencies, spouse beating, profanity, anger, stealing, swindling, envy, jealousy, depression, cutting your wrist, disobedient to authority, rage, unbelief, <coughs> blasphemous thoughts against God, lying, slander, covetousness, greed for power, money, gossiping. Excuse me, ladies, did you read this? Gossiping. <laughs> Gambling. Sarcasm, quarreling, cheating, anorexia, bulimia, addiction to drugs, alcohol, computer games, music, television, internet, social media, masturbation. You can add a lot of this, okay? Pornography, everything. Laziness, procrastination, ungrateful, grumbling, inferiority complex, fear, worry. See, you may say they are minor, but you know what? It's good to have a clean slate. So if you are guilty of any of the above, very simple. Confess them. So how do you confess them? God is opposed to the proud, gives grace to the humble. So what I did, I placed under this list of sins three special categories. One is pride. Why? Because pride is something that people don't realize it is so serious. Everybody read this. God is opposed to the proud. Gives grace to the humble. So I give you the secret of my own encounter. I realize if I just humble myself, I have more grace, more joy, more power, because it's a promise. God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So I just humble myself. You think about it. You humble yourself. What is humbling yourself? You tell God. Be more gra grateful. Don't think of yourself as superior to others. Don't be so sensitive about yourself. Humility is key. Now, pray this prayer. This is crucial. Now, mga lalaki, lalo ng mga lalaki, ha? successful men, successful women, read this. I have lived independently of you. Sought self-glory instead of your glory. I have taken pride in my accomplishments, my abilities, my possessions, instead of acknowledging you as the source of all that I am 
and all that I have and all that I've accomplished. I have reacted to correction and looked down on others. Please forgive me. I repent and renounce this sin of pride. In your name, I cancel all strongholds that Satan and demons have gained in my life because of my pride. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may I glorify you in all I am and do in regards to others as more important than myself. I know of a Christian leader, he never overcame. He did not overcome the sin of pride. Symptoms. When he plays golf and hits a bad shot, he curses. I'm thinking, why does he curse? Because he feels embarrassed. The truth is, we all know he's not a good player. <laughs> so, why do you curse? Next, if he gives a short talk or a talk, and you correct him, he gets angry. These are issues of pride that if you don't overcome, you will be limited in what God can do in and through your life. To me, these are the three tests. Number one, how do you feel when you are criticized? Number two, how do you feel when you are corrected? Number three, how do you feel when you are not acknowledged? These are just sample. Okay. Next category is rebellion. Now, why do I place this under that category? You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel, the sin of rebellion is just like witchcraft. We live in a rebellious generation. God commands us to be subject to authorities. Rebellion to authority is described by God in 1 Samuel chapter 15. You read it. As serious as the sin of divination and insubordination as the sin of idolatry. It opens us to demonic influence. I praise God. For the last 34, 5 years of CCF, we don't have really cases of rebellion. But I'm going to tell you, if you don't teach your children to submit to authority, if you yourself do not humble yourself and listen to authority, you open yourself. Because pride and rebellion are together. The only time I will not obey authority is when they ask me to do something against the Bible. But other than that, I submit to authority. You may not realize this. CCF, we have a board of elders. We are free to discuss. We are free to disagree. But once we are together, I may disagree. But once I know we are together in this, we submit. We don't rebel. Because I believe that God is in control. And because God is in control, he can overrule the decisions of men. Many ladies are guilty of rebellion. But you don't call it rebellion. You call it wisdom <laughs> over your husband. Your husband wants you to do something, and you keep excusing yourself. Without realizing your children are watching you. And the moment you show disrespect to authority... It enters your children's mind. So someday when they grow up, they don't listen to you. Why? Because they copy. So this is a big one. So this you need to examine your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, you have instructed me to be in submission to all authorities in my life. Parents, husband, civil government, church authorities, employers. I acknowledge that in my attitude and actions, I have sinned against you with my rebellious heart. It's all about the heart attitude. So, put the name of the person that you don't like, my heart towards whoever that person is. You have said that rebellion to authority is a sin. Please forgive me. I repent. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I cancel all strongholds in my life. Gained by Satan and evil spirits because of my rebellion. I now choose to be submissive to my authorities from the heart. Rebellion to human authority is eventually rebellion to God. Now for a child, 
I put this under a special category, not just child. It's called suicidal thoughts. I won't be surprised if some of you, from time to time, you think of committing suicide. That is not from you. That is from the devil. For a child of God, suicidal thoughts are Satan's implants. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants us to kill ourselves by so doing to dishonor God and thwart God's plan for our lives. We believe these thoughts, because Satan implants his lies in our brain. You believe that this is good for you, but this is from Satan. So, for example, I want to kill myself. So don't own this thought. It solves no problem and creates a bigger problem in and for you for eternity. I praise God. I have permission from my assistant. Am I correct, Paul? You know, Paul tried to commit suicide seven times. God burdened me to get him to work under my office. Praise God. Today he's used mightily by God. In fact, this afternoon he's going to speak. Praise God. You know why? Because Satan is a liar. He tells you the way to solve your problem, you kill yourself. My friend, don't believe that's from God. That's not from God. That's not from you. It's from Satan. And you know, the shock of your life is after you kill yourself, who will you meet? I don't know who you will meet. But if you meet Jesus, he will ask you. Why did you kill yourself? Renounce and rebuke the thought of suicide in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's how I help people. Every time you feel like committing suicide, you say, Lord Jesus, this is of the devil. I renounce it. Trust in Jesus to solve your problems and to cause all things to work for good in his name, as he promised. You know... I got permission from the parents. A few months ago, I was talking to a young man who was discovered by the mother and the father that he was into pornography, he was into marijuana, he was into drugs. So the mother called the father. Now the father was out of town. When the father called him, the father scolded him. And he was so down, he was so devastated. Because the father is called this young man, aged, I think, 17, 18. And then, the next day, the father called him. The father says, son, let's work this out together. I will help you with your drug problems, pornography. Now, what's shocking is this boy is very active in church. If you look at this boy, you will never know but he was struggling with drugs. He was struggling with pornography. You will never know. So it was exposed. And when the father said, son, we will do it together. I love you. Jesus loves you. He had a sense of hope. Understand? A sense of hope. Because the day before, he thought of killing himself. He thought of using all of his money to buy all the drugs and go to a place enjoy drugs, and kill himself. But when the father called him, he had hope. Now, this is the shocking part. While they were talking on the phone, he sensed now the spirit or a presence from his feet going up, controlling him. He was beginning to discover he was literally being demonized. He began to crawl on the floor. And then his finger began to crawl like this. But he has seen his grandfather. His grandfather was into demon casting ministry of CCF. So he knew what to say. So he began to say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, he was now fighting. Because the voice said, jump. Jump out of the third floor. Just kill yourself. So he knew. He knew this is of the devil. So 
he began to shout and fight. And the father was on the phone. Son, are you okay? Are you okay? Now, do you understand the situation? So he would hear the father saying, I love you. Jesus loves you. But I praise God. Amazing story. This guy was able, by the grace of God, to cast out the demons by himself. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave me. So he came to me. And finally, he was set free. How do we know he was set free? His whole countenance completely changed. The father was telling us, when he goes to church that Sunday, he began welcoming people. How are you? People thought he was crazy. Well, he was completely changed. He had the joy of the Lord. Now imagine, for the past so many years, he was living a hypocritical life. But because of that incident, a few months ago, completely set free. By his own understanding of the power of Jesus. And now the father said, he goes around with three Bibles in his backpack. Every spare time he has, he reads the Bible. You see, something happens. So I'm, all I'm trying to tell you is this. If you are not having the joy of the Lord, if you are not having the peace of Christ, you need to go through this booklet, examine your life. Is there any unconfessed sin? For him, he, he was into pornography, into drugs. And what is shocking, the father and the mother did not know this. And he was active in CCF. So I've discovered something. Many of us, Seems okay, but you are not okay. You are demonized. When I say demonized, to some extent, a lot of us are demonized. Yes? But remember, do not focus on Satan. Don't leave this room and tell your father, your children, you know what? Father, I discovered my demonium palai. You are demonized, 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 demonized. <laughs> Don't be weird, okay? Don't be weird. So, how do you deal with depression? This is shocking. You know, depression is not becoming a number one problem. It is natural to feel sad, to grieve for a time when there are trials, death of a loved one, sickness, regrets, or setbacks. However, depression occurs when these feelings are prolonged, our focus is deflected from God to the problem and the pain. In other words, depression is a byproduct of amazing meditation. You meditate on the wrong thing. Worry is the byproduct of thinking of the wrong thing. So you begin to worry, pretty soon you feel hopeless and you get depressed. It's all the product of the, look at me now. Now many people say it's chemical imbalance so they give you prescription drugs. You know what, I want you to, I'm warning you. Many times, Prescription drugs, many times, will not solve the root problem because it's a spiritual issue. Now, I'm not saying uh, medicine will not help, but in all our counseling experiences, what you think impacts the way you feel. So, what do you do? There is loss of faith and hope because of believing Satan's lies. But no problem is too big for our powerful God who loves us and promises that he has good plans for us. Amen? Yes. Not for destruction, but to give us a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. So when you go back home, you meditate on these verses. He commands us to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us and has all the power to solve our problems. When we do that, we resist the devil and his plan for our destruction. God will strengthen us. 1 Peter 5, 7, and 10. What I like to do, if you don't mind, is this a simple prayer. If you are believing lies about suicide and hopelessness, then you pray this. Everybody aloud.
I surrender all my problems to you. And I thank you in advance for how you will solve them. I declare that you have come to give me abundant life and to give me a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Please forgive me for not trusting in you. In your name, Lord Jesus, I repent and cancel all ground that Satan has gained in my life as a result of my lack of faith. Amen. Now, what are the other sins? Whatever, if there are any other sins, on the list, you follow this prayer. This is just to guide you. Remember, not the wordings. So I confess I've been guilty of whatever that is. <clears throat> Say it's one. Now, most men will never confess that they are greedy. I seldom hear a pastor or a servant of the Lord saying, you know, Lord, I'm covetous, I'm greedy, I'm materialistic. But sometimes you need to examine your life. Okay? I repent and renounce these sinful acts and strongholds and claim your forgiveness and victory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the same pattern. I command all evil spirits that is in me, around me, a result of these sins, and bondage to leave me, to never return, to not send any similar spirits or any reinforcements. I claim in Jesus' name and based on his shed blood, any evil influence that were in my life are rendered powerless and cleansed from my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So the way I will pray this is very simple. Lord, I admit, I confess. I'm guilty of, example, greediness. I'm guilty of gossip. I'm guilty of slandering. Lord Jesus, I now come to you and renounce all of these sins. And if there is any evil spirit that has taken a hold of my life because of these sins, I now ask you, Lord, you, Lord, to cancel it, to remove it, and I now command. Now, look at me now. I command any evil spirit that is in me, around me, to leave me. You cast out the demons by yourself. And then you say, to never come back or send any similar spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? So that's a general pattern. Counterfeit spiritual experiences, occultism. Dear Heavenly Father, let's pray together. I ask you to guard my heart and mind to reveal to me all the cult or occult practices, false religions, idolatry, which my family have knowingly or unknowingly been involved. I remember... Some of my friends here, especially some Chinese family, from Buddhism to Taoism. God is telling us this is serious. You know why? Look at the verses. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb, out of fire. Therefore, everybody read, watch yourselves very carefully. You do not become corrupt. And make for yourself an idol, an image of any shape, form like man or woman. And when you look at the sky, see the sun, the moon and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them or worshiping things the Lord your God has appointed for all the nations under heaven. There shall be no one found among you, one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. Some time ago, I was on my way to fly to the States, and somebody, a D-group leader, called me. Peter, can you drop by? It's very near CCF one of the Valley subdivision. Can you pray for our sister? Because she's going to Singapore, she has a headache, and she's undergoing some operation. Can you just drop by and pray? So to me, it's simple. I'll drop by and pray. Now, I was surprised when I got there, the D group member, the D group leader, it's like a church gathering, okay, a house church. So I began to interview this lady. I said, what's the symptom? Headache, headache. I said, okay. I said, um, 
I'll be glad to pray for you. And uh, I'm not a doctor, but I like to trace the route. So I said, uh, how long has this been? And then the husband opened up. The husband said, you know, pastor, my wife even asked me to go to this, it's a health farm, okay, uh, San Benito, by the San Benito. She said, I even brought her to this farm, but in the farm, she asked the staff to get an albulario. And the albulario came, and the albulario did something, and she fainted. When I heard that, I said, oh, no. Aha, baito. This is going to be a long encounter. You know why? Because I know already, I cannot just pray for her. So I said, before I pray for you, I want to ask you a few questions. You understand my antenna was up. Why? Because she got involved with Al Bolario. And that is a foothold. So I said, before I pray for you, I want you now to say this prayer. Because what you did was wrong. I said, you are from CCF. Why did you do that? Then see, you know, how people are. Smile. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so I said, okay, pray. You pray something like this. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I renounce, okay? So pray. My goodness. She could not. In the name of that. Suddenly, I knew. I said, this is going to be some time. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord. See, she could not because the spirit took over. Before she was okay. But suddenly she took over. So I knew something wasn't right. So I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I said, who are you? And then the voice came up. You know what the voice said? While I was dealing with her, she spoke in Chinese. <laughs> and the Chinese voice said, Angkong Bobe. Angkong Bobe. In Chinese, in English, grandfather does not want. Grandfather does not want. So I said, huh. But you see, don't mind. Don't have long conversation with the devil. So I said, follow me now, follow me. So I woke her up. I said, look at me, look at me. You now say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the meantime, all the D group members, now this is like, you can imagine now, you can make a wonderful movie out of this, okay? <laughs> because uh, they were around, they were praying, and then they were reciting Philippians chapter 2. Every knee will bow, every tongue, and you can see, you know, all the... Sometimes people will think she's crazy. She's not crazy. But she was able to say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to leave me. When she said that, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to leave me, you can see. <sighs> there was a release and she vomited. <sighs> I don't even recall where was I when the vomit came out, okay? <laughs> but I remember the daughters took up some uh, bad day, okay? So after that, post-care, post-care. I said, why did you speak in Chinese? She said, no, I don't speak in Chinese. She, she didn't even know. The daughter said, Mama, you spoke in Chinese. You said, Ang Kong Bobe. So I said, tell me, what is it about your grandfather? Ah, she said, yeah, my grandfather was a Buddhist. Uh, you know, like a monk or like, you know, I'm offered. Mm. I said, no, we need to deal with that also. She praised God. We trace it. This is the meaning of occult practices of your ancestor. It will affect you. Occult practices, especially, I'm warning you, albulario, or you go see this anting anting, or whatever you guys are doing, Ouija board, horoscope, horror, scope, and you think, you think it's nothing. It is something. Satan talks about the deep secrets of Satan. So don't get involved. 
Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. So these are counterfeit experiences. Spiritual glass, Ouija board, fortune telling, palm reading, tarot cards, horoscope, crystal ball, consulting medium, whatever, sorcery, feng shui, duende, albulario, witchcraft, manco kulam, okay, magic, black magic, astrology, seance, mind reading, anting anting, faith healing. Yoga, physical yoga is fine. But when you begin to trance, you know, you, you, and you begin to say the name of the Indian gods, you know, there are names, and you begin to recite them. You be careful. Astral projection, speaking in trance, speaking to the dead, animal sacrifice. By the way, many of you know our family is into subdivision development. You know, when we drill well, they say you must sacrifice a chicken, Whatever. I tell you, I don't do any of those. I believe God will guide us to where we will drill. But if you believe it, then Satan will let you think it's his power. So, gayuma, ghost, table lifting, automatic writing, channeling, levitation. One of our friends went to uh, either China or Thailand. They bought some antiques. I tell you. These antics, you have to be careful also. Especially if it is used for religious purposes. In his house in Singapore, he got this amazing painting. And he forgot all about it. And the helper, who were from the Philippines, began to tell her, Sir, we see a lady wearing red at night, passing through the windows. Now, my friend is a man of God. He's a businessman. He loves the Lord. He, he dismissed it. But eventually he said, huh. So he has this amazing antique. And then there are two things in his house. One is painting. What is this antique? You know, when he destroyed that... Uh, whatever that antique it, green smoke came out. He cannot explain it. And then the painting. So he took out this painting, and the helpers from the Philippines was looking at the painting, and when they saw the painting, both of them fainted. They collapsed. And he said, why did you collapse? That's the girl. <laughs> no, I, I'm not saying destroy all paintings, but this guy is very simple. He burned it, okay? My whole point is this. Satan has certain access. Now, my wife will tell with you, share with you her own personal experience about these uh, antics. Will you please read this prayer? Lord, I confess I participated in whatever it is. You know, fortune telling, whatever it is. Say each one of them, check above. I repent and ask for your forgiveness and I renounce this. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command any evil spirits that are in me or around me as a result of these things to leave me right now, to never return, to not send any similar spirits or replacement spirits. You know, by the way, years ago, in our university, we have this spirit of the glass. You know, you put your finger and then zzz, do you understand that? They invited me in. But by that time, I met Jesus already. Would you believe it? The moment I entered that room, the whole thing stopped. It won't move. Guess how good I felt. <laughs> because it is not me. It is Jesus. You see, you are different. Sometimes, these are evidence to me, the reality of Jesus versus the devil. But I'm not saying this is the basis of your faith. The basis of our faith, of course, the death and resurrection of Jesus. But let's hear my wife's story. Okay, just a simple story. I had an American friend, and she, got, she saw these rice gods from Baguio, uh, from the rice fields. And she has two really adorable sons. And so she brought them to her house, put them inside. 
And as soon as those two rice gods were in the house, the children began to have nightmares. At first, she didn't connect it. But then when she realized that those idols were the thing that happened before the nightmares, so she took them outside, and the nightmare stopped. A, a lady called me one day. She said, there's a white lady appearing in my mother-in-law's house where she lived, and that house has six floors full of antiques. The mother-in-law's a collector from around the world. And that white lady was asking to take the lives of the people in the house. And so... Oh, she could not remove the items because those items belonged to her mother-in-law. But you know what we did? A team of us went there. We prayed over every antique that would have been maybe demonized because Satan likes to be worshipped, and so do, uh, so do the demons. So when we're worshipping idols, many times it's a demon inside that's being worshipped. That's why it says pray to worship anything or being other than the living God um, because the Bible says we've exchanged the truth for a lie. And worshiped and served the created things rather than the creator who is praised forever. And the Bible says that when we are worshiping those things, we're actually worshiping demons. So we prayed over everything in Jesus' name, and all of the demonic uh, um, manifestations stopped. Again, it's power in Jesus' name. So the next thing that we would have to go over is many times before we're Christians, we are ignorant. And we do not know that we shouldn't be praying to these things. We're thankful it's just a representation. But God says, don't do it. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them. For I, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children on the third to the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. So God is very specific. And uh, we excuse it, but God makes no excuse for it. And so if we have done this in ignorance, the Bible says, I am the Lord your God. I will not give my glory to another nor my praise to anyone else. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, to Christ, so, as, so I might preserve you as a pure virgin to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may be somehow led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. He says he should be our first love, the only one that we worship. You know, in CCF, we don't attack other religions. We just stand by the Bible and the truth. But let's read this verse together. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. So there's only one God, one way to God, one mediator. So whom do we pray through? Jesus. And so that's why if you have in the past... Prayed to anybody else, venerated any other gods, images, idols. This is the prayer. And let's pray it together, okay? Lord Jesus, I confess that I have venerated and prayed to other gods, images, and idols, etc. I ask for your forgiveness and repent and renounce having done this. You are the only true God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command any evil spirits that are in me or around me because of these things to leave me right now, to never return, to not send any similar or replacement spirits to me. I claim that any evil influences that were in my life are rendered powerless and cleansed from my life. Amen. Amen? Okay, so... And the other thing is um, note. Okay, this is a note. Now, we don't want you to go home and start saying demon, 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 right? But I had bought an idol head in Pakistan when I was traveling with the crossroads. And I'm into creative things. And so this was dug up in a field in Pakistan. And after we got married, I put it in a long hallway that we had in our house on a shelf. And one day when I was walking down the hallway, it's like, whoa, all the hair on my head stood up. And I looked at that idol, and that idol looked at me. And that was the last time it ever looked at me because I went outside and I smashed it. So uh, I'm not saying, you know, get dramatic, but really that scared me. 
Uh, remove any idols that have been worshipped and all other cult items in your possession. If you're living with a family member and in-laws who own idols and occult things, pray over these objects and cast out any demons not in their presence, okay, alone, <laughs> with somebody, other Christians uh, residing in them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and bind them not to come back. Does that make sense? So think about, do you have anything like maybe Ouija board, tarot cards, uh, books on the occult. Do you know the first Christians? It said that when they came to Christ, they made a big bonfire of all their magic books. So, so this is uh, for family history, sins of ancestors. Let's read. Uh, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third to the, and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to husbands, to those who love me, and keep my commandments. So I want to share with you what happened when that night our dear neighbor called me and I was trying to instruct them on the phone how to exercise the demon out of their helper. And they, they said, we're just outside the door of your house. And so my husband was there. You know, he couldn't get up. So I said, well, Jesus, I don't go alone. I go with you. And so I was not afraid because I know I go in the name of Jesus. It's not about me, you know. And so my dear, the, the son and daughter of our neighbor, uh, who happens, uh, yeah, to be here today, <laughs> so um, called me. We went to the house. And the helper was behind the cabinet lying on the floor catatonic. Uh, she was not a, a, a Christian. I didn't know that at that time. And so when I started to try to exercise her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I said, as Peter said, you would do to those who are not believers, no response. But I did not raise my voice because, as he said, it's not our power, but it's Jesus' power. Amen? So I just kept repeating with them, repeating with me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Evil spirits, you have to come out. And we repeated some Bible verses. And then she did sit up. And then she came a little bit, uh, a little bit aware and uh, growled at me. She went, and I thought, well, that's not going to scare me. Jesus is with me. <laughs> My heart beat a little bit. Okay, so. <laughs> and, then, and then, but I remember. And then when she was a little bit aware, I, I ha asked her this quick question. Are you in any blatant sin? She said, no. And I said, do you have any ancestors who were spiritistas or into the occult? And she said, yes, my grandfather, my grandfather. So this was the stronghold in her life. And so there, I said, now you have to say this after me. And by God's grace, she was able to say this. I said, you say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I renounce all the sins of my grandfather. And she repeated the prayer which we shared with you. And after that, she relaxed. I mean, she became human again, like a person. And then I asked the, my, my neighbor, my friend, I said, um, has she accepted Jesus in her life? She said, no. And then she went canatotic again. And my neighbor, she had the wisdom to clap her hands really loud like that. And the girl started. And then she said, I said, do you want Jesus to protect you? You receive him into your life. And do you know what? That dear little girl, she prayed to receive Christ that night. And then she smiled. And then I hugged her. And then I asked my, my neighbor just today, I said, how's she doing? That was a month ago. And she has been delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. That's the story that I wanted her to tell you. Because I was in bed, I could not move, but praise God. Do you believe Christ has all power? Yes. All right. So, Lord Jesus, please help me to recall any occult practices, idol worship, and addiction in my parents or grandparents. Now, let me tell you, Western Christianity don't understand this. So, they probably send people to the mental hospital, and they stay there. But... We have cases after cases where the doctor says, we don't understand, but she's not okay. Where's Vinsberg? Vinsberg, just stand up. Okay. Later on, you can talk to Vinsberg. Okay? Vinsberg, daughter, was demonized. And a lot of, you have to understand, a lot of sincere Christians don't believe this even though they are Christian. But praise God for Vince Burke. He was trained in CCF. <laughs> and 
And he realized her daughter, my wife and I know the entire family, lovely girl, lovely daughter, Christian, a Christian, yet demonized. Different voice, different action. To make a long story short, by the grace of God, the doctor don't know what to do. She was kept and she was delivered by the grace of God. And then instantaneously, she's okay. And the doctor told Vince, I really don't know how to explain this. You know why they cannot explain? Because this is a spiritual dimension. So my friend, what we are trying to teach you is this. Don't be afraid of the devil. Live in holiness, in purity. But you must exercise authority. My last example I want to share with you is this ancestral thing. Because we have a family whose parents or, God or ancestors is into, you know, this uh, mankukulam, uh, witchcraft, arbolario, all of these things. We were visited by missionaries that Sunday. But that young girl, maybe less than 80 pounds, suddenly went crazy. She was demonized. When, you see the word I use, demonized? Because different degree of control. In this case, the control is beyond just the mind, even her body. And she began to be obnoxious. So everybody ran. I wanted to run, but I couldn't run. <laughs> I was a young Christian then. And I made sure I confessed all my sins. So I look at her. Then she looked at me. You know what she said? Now, Filipino are very respectful. We don't call people's first name, right? I mean, if they're older, what do we say? And kuya, kuya, tito, opo. You know what she said? Peter! <laughs> Very disrespectful. But I don't mind that. Now, my friend, who's a German-American, was trying to hold her. He's around 300 pounds. He's a big one. But this young girl, less than 80 pounds, is so strong. I mean, uh, she was so strong. You could not hold her. And then she tried to hit us, you know. But I discovered something. And this is what you do. In the name of the, Jesus, in the, name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bomb you. You know, she wanted to hit. No. You will think there is a chain. But, but there's no chain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bound you, the other hand. You know what she did? In the bench, huh? Have you seen a reverse push-up? <laughs> you know, I do push-up. But she does a reverse push-up. <laughs> Simple. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you, live. By the grace of God, she collapsed. Then when, she opened her, when she opened her eyes, she said, Kuya Peter, what are you doing here? I said, you know what happened to you? She said, no. My friend, the power of Jesus is real. So what must you do? So this is what you need to do, okay? Again, these are just suggested prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I reject and disown all the sinful practices of my ancestors. I do not agree or approve of their activities. I pledge my allegiance to Jesus Christ and cancel any claim that Satan has over me through the occult and sinful practices of my ancestors or any curses placed on me. My friend was a missionary to Thailand and he told me his, ex his encounter with a lot of demons. One of them told him while he was casting out the demons in the, in the family, you know what the demon said? We own this family for many generations. Why are you bothering us? We own this family. They are ours. It's deep in the Buddhism. You know what my friend said? The Lord Jesus Christ has come to set them free. My friend, Jesus Christ is amazing. So, let's close with this amazing declaration, okay? So, how do you have declaration together.
from the power of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God's Son, Jesus Christ. I cancel all satanic, demonic strongholds in my life. I belong to the Lord Jesus, who purchased me with his own blood by the power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command Satan and all evil spirits that are in me or around me to depart. I bind them not to return to me and not to send any replacement or similar spirits. I declare myself to be eternally and completely committed to the Lord Jesus Christ in body, soul, and spirit. I will faithfully follow Jesus and do his will by the power of the Holy Spirit in me from this day forward. Amen. Amen. Now, simple prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I am your child through faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now I submit myself and my body to you as a living sacrifice to be used for righteousness. Glorify yourself through me. Enable me to grow in Christ's likeness. The destiny of the devil and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire. Where the beast and the false prophet are, they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan is a defeated foe. In the meantime, he wants to wreak havoc in your life. So my friend, I have a simple advice. People ask me, how can I make sure Satan or the demons won't have control over my life? Very simple. Think of a waste can. Think of basura. When you have basura, when you have a waste basket, full of rotten food, what do you see? You will see flies and you see mosquitoes. Roaches. You clean it up. Make sure it's clean. You won't see flies, you won't see mosquitoes, and you won't have roaches. The same thing with your heart. The same thing with your life. Live a life committed to Jesus. No bitterness, no anger. Any addiction you have, we are here to help you. So, Living in victory. So, guys, D group leaders, did you learn something today? So, if there is manifestation in your house, in your neighbor, what will you do now? Don't call me. <laughs> Don't call these guys. Because you have the authority. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, don't make people dependent on you. Many of you have this idea, you always need people to help you, deliver you. That is wrong. Once you have been delivered through the power of the Holy Spirit, you have Christ in you, right? So you help yourself. Look at the mirror, seriously, and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command whoever is inside you. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Okay? But don't glare or focus on Satan. Focus on Jesus. Glance, glance from time to time. It's called, you know, code red. You know, it's a warfare. You want to know. So living in victory. You have just won a victory over the strongholds in your life. But the spiritual battle is still raging. To live in victory, assume responsibility to maintain your victory. Say no to sin and Satan's lies and say yes to God. And my friend, you will not know Satan's lies, many of you, because you don't read the Bible. You only read the Bible on Sunday. You only read the Bible on Saturday seminar. You got to read the Bible daily. How will you know the truth? If you do sin, immediately confess your sin to God. Repent and claim his forgiveness. This is very important because if you continue in sin, Satan will again gain strongholds in your life, which he will control and influence you. My friend, there is no shortcut to living a victorious life. Live a holy life. And when you sin, confess immediately. Do not accumulate sin. In this country, you have this bad habit. You go to confession once a week. Yes or no? And now you are thinking, you apply that in the Christian life. No, you know I confess my sin instantaneously. The moment I have a bad attitude, or I raise my voice towards my wife, praise God, but if ever I do that, or I'm in the traffic, and I feel like cursing, you know what I say? 
Lord Jesus, that's wrong. Move forward, okay? So, be continually controlled and empowered by the Holy Spirit. I like you to always be filled by the Holy Spirit. Look at what the Bible says. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled. Notice the grammar. Imperative, continuous, tense. Be always filled with the Spirit of God. Now, some of you did not attend the Holy Spirit class. It's very simple. Once I understood the meaning of the Spirit-filled life, I want you to picture a house. In a house, you have many rooms. You have invited Jesus Christ to come into your house. To be Spirit-filled is not to have more of Jesus. It's not to have more of the Holy Spirit. To be Spirit-filled is to allow Jesus to have control of all the rooms. You see, many of us, we ask Jesus as a guest, Lord, stay in the best room. This is yours. But you have not given him the attic. You have not given him your study room. Lots of, you know, internet, pornography there. There, there are things you don't want Jesus to know. To be controlled is you surrender all the rooms. Then I discovered it is more than surrendering all the rooms. I discovered to be filled with the Holy Spirit is you come up with a title, with a deed of sale. Let me repeat. To be filled with the Holy Spirit you don't give Jesus just a kiss to all the rooms. You sign a deed of sale, a deed of transfer. I now transfer to you, Lord Jesus. You transfer the ownership of the house to Jesus. Until you transfer completely your entire life, you will not experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Many of us have surrendered part of our lives to Jesus. But you have not surrendered all. Your love life, your financial life, your career. You have not surrendered all. In my case, by the grace of God, when I learned that Jesus loves me and he wants what's best for me, I told Jesus, Lord, I give you my all. I trust you. You are a better manager of my life than I could ever be. I will follow you. No matter what it takes. Boom. When I did that, the freedom, the power is different. Complete freedom. And that's the meaning of be constantly filled with the Spirit. Because sometimes you surrender and you take over. You see what I'm saying? No, you just say, Lord, everything is yours. Put on the full armor of God. You know, the context is very clear. I'm now giving you post process to become strong. So you must put on the full armor of God. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Notice the armor of God. For what purpose? Why do you put on the full armor of God? For what purpose? Read this. For what purpose? So that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes. That's the reason. So we don't put the full armor of God. Now, if you look at the armor of God, example, Having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, taking up the shield of faith, which you are able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All of these things, you will notice, are all frontal. There is nothing protecting your back. The shield, the breastplate. You know why? You are never to run away from Satan. You are to stand firm. With all prayer, petition at all times, you are to stand firm. You don't run away from the Lord. It's a beautiful picture of how we are to engage in warfare. Put on the entire provisions of God. The entire armor of God, to me, is one word. Jesus Christ. It's your gospel of peace. Is the truth, the sword of the Spirit, it's the Word of God. So these are your provisions. James tells us, submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable, mourn, weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves 
under the, in the presence of God, and he will exalt you. In short, three simple steps. Submit to God. Surrender everything. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And how do you stay free? Look at the next verse. It says here, draw near to God. So you stay close to Jesus. You stay away from sin. As simple as that. So how do we go on life? What must you do? Submit to God. Be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Resist the devil. Not fight. Resist. He will flee. Remember? Kaleng aso. Askal. Be part of a discipleship group. Read the Bible daily. Memorize. Meditate on God's word. Don't believe Satan's lies. Study the Bible. Pray to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Flee from sin. And the places and the people that tempt you to sin. Worship the Lord in private and corporately on Sunday. Declaration now. Everybody, I recognize there's only one true and living God who exists as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is worthy of all honor, praise, and worship as the creator, sustainer, beginner, and end of all things. I recognize that Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. I believe that he came to destroy the works of Satan, the rulers and authorities, and made a public display of them, having triumph over them. Now, I believe that God has proven his love for me. Because of when I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. I believe that he delivered me from the darkness, transferred us into his kingdom, in whom I have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, I believe that Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth and that he is the head over all rule and authority. I believe that Satan and his demons are subject to me in Christ because I am a member of Christ's body. I therefore obey and command to resist the devil and I command him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to leave my presence. I believe that I am now a child of God. I am seated with Christ in the heavenlies I believe that I was saved by the grace of God through faith. It was a free gift and not the result of any works on my part. I choose to be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. I put no confidence in the flesh, for the weapons of my warfare are not of the flesh. I put on the full armor of God, and I strove to stand firm in my faith and resist the evil one. I believe that apart from Christ, I can do nothing. So I declare my dependence on Him. I choose to abide in Christ in order to bear much fruit and glorify Jesus. Jesus is my Lord, and I reject any counterfeit gifts or works or Satan in my life. I believe that the truth will set me free. Therefore, I stand against Satan's deception by taking every thought captive in obedience to Christ. I declare the Bible is the only authoritative standard. I choose to speak the truth in love. I choose to present my body as instrument of righteousness, a living and holy sacrifice. I renew my mind and the living word of God in order that I may prove that God is good, acceptable, and perfect. I ask my Heavenly Father to fill me with His Holy Spirit, to lead me in all truth, and to empower my life so that I may live above and not carry out the desire of the flesh. I crucify the flesh and choose to walk by the Spirit. I am accepted. I am God's child. As a disciple, I am a friend of Jesus Christ. I have been justified. I am united with the Lord. I am one with him. I have been bought with a price, and I belong to God. I am a member of Christ's body. I have been chosen by God and adopted as his child. I have been redeemed and forgiven of all my sins. I am complete in Christ. I have direct access to the throne of grace through Christ. I am free from condemnation. 
I am assured that God works for my good in all circumstances. I am free from any condemnation brought against me, and I cannot be separated from the love of God. I have been established, anointed, and sealed by God. I am hidden with Christ in God. I am confident that God will complete the good work He started in me. I am a citizen of heaven. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I am born of God, and the evil one cannot touch me. I am significant. I am a branch of Jesus Christ, and the true vine, and a channel of his life. I have been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. I am God's temple. I am a minister of reconciliation for Christ. I am seated with Jesus Christ in the heavenly realm. I am God's workmanship. I may approach God with freedom and confidence. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Freedom in Christ ministries, a lot of this, are from Neil Anderson. I want to give him the credit. But above all, we are children of God. Yeah. Praise God.